Ev every single part. A stress analyzer. They all have problems in making them. They all have tolerances. The, the cable itself, we, we choose it for low resistance, flexibility, insulation capacity. Some people choose it to be silver, you know. Right. Um, for us, friction in the bearing is important. Of course. If it won't track the record, of course. what's the point in having silver if it actually works? Of course. Well, no, we <laughs> understand. Even, yeah. even, even reviewers understand these things. Mm. <laughs> You're not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. One of the great improvements, you know I'm a computer cynic, Yes. but one of the big improvements in modern 3D technology is we've been able to model parts. Sure. Um, what we were able to do by feel and hand drawing in the past, we can now do it on of course. 3D. Of yeah. And we can, you know, you can get 1% extra uh, the stress concentration. You can model stresses. Yeah. So these are our, you said, low cost arms. Right. They have to um, pass a friction test at the end, a total of 40 milligrams. Hmm. And now uh, all the rest of our arms have to be under 20 milligrams, including the cable friction. You won't get that on any other arm at any cost, ever. Hmm. Nowhere near it. No other arm? No other no. arm. No. You can do everything. Is yeah. okay, so there anything else in here I should see? Let's, let's just take a quick look. This is what everybody buys from you, yeah. right? Everybody buys these. Every, whatever arm you see that other people are making, ironic? they're buying this part. It's almost irrelevant to the performance of the arm. But you still need one, and you happen to make the best one, so why would anybody try to manufacture them when they can get them from I you? I don't understand it. We, we didn't buy from us. You know, everybody they, does. They have a precision engineering company. But they tell us it would cost them 10 times as much. Of course, because you've already done the work. <laughs> You know, these are, this sort of stuff's far more important. These are gauges that measure in microns. Yeah. 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 Like zero, zero, sure. zero, one inches. Yeah. So each little individual stage is, is a micron. Yeah, yeah. These have only been available in the last two or three years. Really? Because they can yeah. only manufacture them now that they have all the same kind of It's never them. possible to make the previous gauges were point zero zero one. Right. And they've now with modern machinery, modern computerized right. CNC. Exactly. Can, so that, that follows all the way down the line in manufacturing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's great. We used to use the zero 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 ones and use feel. Right. We still use exactly the same amount of human feel, but this is just a, a slightly better, more accurate. And so all of this makes vinyl playback better yeah. in ways that it couldn't have been done in the vintage era. Well, well it doesn't because nobody else does it. Okay. Well, nobody else makes their bearing files. Right. Okay. You, you go. I'll set you a challenge. <laughs> okay. I don't see any other company that compresses their bearings between one and four microns. Okay. I'll, I'll look into it. <laughs> Okay, now in here we have um, this ah, is your cool. You see, no, I didn't know this was happening. We're, we're actually getting into production here. This looks like of the stylus pressure gauge. Yeah, or pre-production maybe. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope I'll get one to review. If it's as good as it looks like, it's going to be. I have to buy one. Yeah, this was Ashton's. Great. Oh, right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah, he's, he's winding the giant cartridges for the giant turntables. Oh, is, this is not for a giant cartridge? No. Oh. He's in a crossover. Oh, I, I know. But you could make a giant cartridge using these coils. A really we, big. Coils. Actually, that's how we first started development of moving coils. We made a 20 times scale model. Really? And, and started measuring what was coming off the coils and seeing how it worked. Oh. This could be for a really big record, the future of big records. <laughs> it was the only way I could think of. I'm, I'm not a um, intuitive, in, I just say try things. Right. And I couldn't see how moving bulk cartridges worked. It didn't make sense to me. And, and doing it in 20 times 
Printed disc. Huh. So these are inductors for speakers? Yeah. But the main purpose here is, is voice coils for loudspeakers. You make those here too. Yeah. And we do that because we wind four and eight layer coils, which is impossible with automatic machinery. Right. Yeah. And what are these what are these silvery? That's sol soldering. Just oh that's just soldering. a clear that just that cleans, cleans the oh, okay. cleans the I use a sponge, that's probably that's the, the older but the sponges used to get full up with it. Of course, it. horrible. But that's, yeah. You do a lot of Actually, soldering. Funny enough, I like sponges still, I try, but yeah. I don't get them anymore. Yeah, it's just for like for a very little bit of work, a sponge is fine, yeah. but for this kind of industrial I've scale. I've got one sponge left, I'm sort of protecting it. Yeah, me too. I have one, one weller, it says weller right on it. Okay, that takes care of this section of production. And this is the new dual, dual layer turntable. No, what? I have the faintest idea what, yeah. what this is. This is a test tube. Yeah. Yep. Um, Does each arm have to go into this jig for, for some purpose? This would be for um, clipping an arm in and setting, testing the friction. For each arm, each yep. arm has to go in there before oh, it goes out. Yep. So each arm is tested in, in, yep. in this jig or that jig over yep. there. I see. Okay. I hear more of these. Oh. As I say, this is waiting to develop a new space somewhere. We're probably going to build out over that floor there. And the moment. This is a corridor. <laughs> right. So we're using it's a passageway, it. right? Yeah. Loudspeaker production. This is something we we. We have ideals. We said we would never invest in machinery, and then we did. In the, what kind of machinery? This is for making wiring looms. Oh, I see. All done by subcontractors, which is our philosophy. Right. Use, use subcontractors. Right. So they can keep up the date. They can put input into sure. it. Sure. But our subcontractors couldn't keep up with the growth. Wow. Um, and it became a no-brainer that when we started making more turntables, we actually made a profit for the first time for many years. Phil said, where's that got to go? We buy some machines to make wiring looms, which makes us keep up. Sharon was working with us at the time, and she had experience running a wiring loom oh. area. So it was all over six months we paid for it. Wow. So we'll get to go down there and look and see what, what they're doing. Let's, do, let's go downstairs and see what they're doing. Here you've got a quick overview. But first, let's, let's see what, what's going on over here. Over here? Wait, where, where do you want? This is tone arms, electronics. Let's, let's do tone arms first. This is from the RB303 or, or the Planet 3 puppets. All okay. tone arms, except for the Planet 2 and Planet 1. Right. So here's where they're adding the, the wiring harnesses. All right. What we can't, what's difficult to do when we're really busy is set up specially to show. So this, you know, what no, we're no. doing is taking the opportunity of Yeah, I think it's more interesting just to watch people at, at work. This, this would be, this is where um, we select bearings. I was telling you about using the gauges. Right. And setting you a challenge to find any anyone else in the world do this. When I was here last time, I built an arm. Yeah. I hope to God no one got it. No, it, it, this is easily doable by many people. Probably, you know, 10, 20 percent of people do this sort of job. Right. But it also it depends on the design. Understanding the tolerancing, you know, how, how far out all the parts are, have to be. Um, it's, it's sort of, we'll, we'll get bearings in here. Now, here's a. Here's a typical, it changes from, from month to month, from week to week, and from operator to operator. Oh. But we get bearings in. The Tolerance on the bore and the outside is, is four microns. Okay. Yeah. And the tolerance on the parts we make is four microns, so we've got eight microns tolerance. Wow. We want to assemble them within one or two. How do you do that? I don't know, how do you do that? Well, to measure one would take an hour or two, and we'll find out where. So we use feel. 
you just human feel. Oh. Can you feel? Yeah, you, you feel that. It goes on easily, and it gets a little stiffer as you try and push it on. Oh yeah, it's yeah. tough. It's but that, that is manufactured within a tolerance of plus or minus two microns, and what you're feeling is a difference of one or two microns. Wow. It's quite easy to feel half a micron. Really? Once you experience yeah. it. So one guy here can sit down and within an hour, if everything goes well, <laughs> he can make enough bearing assemblies for the whole day's assembly. I see. Yeah. And inside of each of these, is there a ball race in there? What yep. is it? They're, they're normal I mean, precision ball races. Tiny. Tiny, yeah, yes. small ones. They're stainless, stainless steel, high quality stainless steel. Right. They come in um, tolerance, they're, they're what you, it's called ABEX 7 bearings, right. which are the highest grade you can get. Right. They're even then noise tested. They run up under a microphone, and the microphone picks up the noise, which is each a state. One is each one of these gets done by the supplier. The supplier, us. Yeah. 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 And then we have to select at least five grades within that. For the different arms that you sell? No, no, for each each, each arm. Okay. Because of that tolerance build-up that's something it. like five times as much as we need. Okay. But it's not difficult, yeah? He's, he's it's making, time consuming. making all this. So here, here is actually, he's, he's, this is about a month's worth of trying to select even higher quality for the RP8 and RP10. But putting out arms that are, are easily good enough for the 330. I see. Yeah, exactly what you were talking about. Right. Grading within tolerances. Right. Well, people don't get any. Now they get it. Now they get to see what. Yeah, the last batch of these spindles seems to have had quite a few large ones. Yeah. Yeah. So they've stuck them in a bit. One day they'll get some bearings <laughs> to put outside. <laughs> right. And now, oh, we've got this, you know, we'll put those together. Okay, yeah. and now over here, now. Here's a, a test. Green. Hi. This is a, a finished assembled arm. Every individual guy has gone through something like 20 or 30 different personal so this is a final wow. setup. And you can see here the 20 milligram weight. Hold your hand out. Okay, that's that's the bearing friction and wire friction on all oh. their arms. Oh. And once it's assembled, it will hold that that tolerance. Yeah. Unless you use yeah. it as a hammer. Yeah. Or unless there's been a human mistake. You mean someone's taken it apart? Well, it, because the people involved, people are not perfect. Right. So maybe one in a thousand might come back. Wow. And which arm is this? This is the this is a 303. 303. So 330. So all this time. 330. 330. Sorry. So 330. All this time and effort has to go into every one of these arms yeah. to, to make sure that it. But it's not a lot. We have, we, we can make 100 of these in the day. Really? It depends on how many people are up here. Yeah. Um, there's only four of us today, so we've probably about 40. Yeah. How long have you been doing this job? I've been here five years now. And you, you've seen vinyl, you've seen them, you get busier and busier doing this Oh, stuff. definitely, yeah. yeah. When it started, it was half the amount of people yeah. that wow. we had now. I mean, it's really wow. improved. Yeah. yeah. It's so really we've good. had to split off some of the yes. departments over yeah. there. Yeah. Right. That's what. For most of our life, we had six people in here maximum. And downstairs, right? And, and some more downstairs, downstairs now. Oh, there's three, wasn't there? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Cool. Yeah. 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 Wow. That's it. And at busy times, we've got 12, even more than 12. Max, um, large, thanks, 12, yeah. But and then they took it out of each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these are all finished arms up here? Yes. Yep. Oh. Yep. Look at that. This is like a day. Really? Yep. Wow. A day's worth. 
So all these That's people waiting are, to go into the turntable. All these people are playing records. <laughs> That's what's great about this. All people buying these turntables to play records. They're not buying it to hang on the wall, they're playing records. Since I love this thing. Well, the vinyl service are people buying records to hang on the wall. They're not really playing them. Right. That, that's right. But look, Michael, I'm giving you something else you can measure. And that's get yourself a 20 milligram weight. Right. Every arm that comes your way. I will do that. Okay. Absolutely. Good idea. Let's hold them accountable. That's horizon to do the horizontal bearing friction, all, all you do is Sorry, you put it on the head shell. Sure. Vertical is easy, you just balance the arm and drop the weight on. Right. It doesn't need to move huge amounts, okay, as long as it just moves. Moves. Okay. And, vert and, the, and horizontal? Horizontally, I'll, sh I'll show you what you just do. bang it on the side of it? Yeah. We, we have a magnetic bias and there's a residual, so we have to just cancel that. Right. Okay. So if you just take that and then move that through 45 degrees. Just a slight a bit moving. Can you see it moving slightly? That's charming. Yeah. You know, just. It just detect. starts to move. Right. It won't move much because of the bias. Right. Holding it in place. Right right? It's worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that moved. There's also oil in the bearing. Yeah, right sometimes it gets a is a major part of it. Yeah. Most arms are four times that. You know, if you've got an SME, a Graham, a Lynn, typically 80. Really? You may yeah. actually need a little tap, right? It's okay, I'm not criticizing. No, 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 let's <laughs> get it right. <laughs> <laughs> What I'm showing is suggesting Michael when he reviews arms, he, he can actually. Get oh, an yeah, idea. definitely, yeah. 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 I will. Yeah. Michael like, likes to check things out and measure them and as best as I can. But you know, you can go to university and study metrology, the science of measurement. Just. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that to others. Oh, no. Well, that's obvious. Yeah. There's no magnetic force that right. way, though. So, but this way, you see it moving it's just slightly. Like yeah. yeah. It normally would be a bit more than that. Yeah. So normally a bit more than. Yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> sell this arm to me. There you go. Yeah. 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 And then, then the magnet. You, you, you move it in the magnetic field, and it then stops it. Sure. There you go. Yeah. Okay. I see the test. Great, thank you. All right. <laughs> Just soldering the fine wires onto the main arm chain. Oh yeah, this and is also an electrical. Yeah, this is the part people don't get to see. No, who, who, who strips the ends of the wires? It looks like it's. Most people try and strip the wires and tend them. It doesn't work. What we do is we just dip the wires in flux. I don't even bother stripping them. And once they're dipped in flux, the melted solder wicks its way up into the oh. Simple little technique. You see the little yep. hole flux? Yeah. And then he's going to test. He's going to test continuity, right, to make sure that. It's and there's a fume extractor. Health and safety. Health and safety. Yeah. And which arm wire is this? Which, which, arm, which arm is this? This is a three thirty. Three thirty. There you go. Okay, we're good. There's another test here where it's actually the cartridge on it. You know, these, these tests have limitations. Sure. 
for the cartridge player. Check the output on both channels. Right. What is what is often a little another weight here, so so this operator will double check what <laughs> if he's suspicious about something. You know. And what is not acceptable? Something is not acceptable. Oh, the screw is sticking out. It's next to the arm lift. I see a screw sticking out. But okay, whatever. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Me neither. But they know. As long as they know, it's what's important, right? Ah, I know what that is. That screw there. Ah, I see. That must have been a one-off problem where the threads were not made correctly and the screw was going up to the correct torque but in finding it wasn't actually holding the yeah. bit and so they were asking here people to look, look for it. Lots of parts. These these are the parts in the knob. <laughs> <laughs> okay this is this is this is a this is an Ivory 330 all the parts. Wow. Every one of those parts has tolerances. Right. This is, you know, the plus and minus two degrees or yeah. yeah. stylus, for instance. See that? See, you know when you see these 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 morons that come to shows, it goes, I, I know what the parts cost of that is. I can make one of those. They don't know what the parts cost is, and they couldn't make one of those. Uh, they quite often bring my order, say, 10 euros, but... Uh, the proof batch was maybe 20, so we'll put two or three orders together. We will be responsible for, you know, day-to-day -day batch operations, how many are being made of this, there, or whatever. So she'll be working with Sue, who's on holiday. So this is, what we're, what we're seeing here is electronics. Yeah. Ampl these are amplifiers. Well, amplifiers, CD players, stacks. Right. And what is he? What is that over there? It's a C CD player. What's the, what's the CD player? Oh, see, oh, that's the old that old format that people used to listen to CDs. Yeah, I remember. I, it's a, I remember those. Yeah, I guess the people still need them. Need they're them. very special and they're good value. And they need it for, for their vintage CDs that they still yeah. have. Yeah. yeah. This is all designed in house. Yep. Terry, that's all Terry. And the. Uh, and what are, what are the chips? These these are good for 16-bit because they're just the CD. We we have our own operating chip. Oh. The, again, only um, that's a whole new story. It's in the book. The story's in the yeah. book. So it'll take me take me half a day to explain. Yeah. And uh, I was told that it was developed by a group of venture capitalists who can see the future of CD, and everybody had stopped developing them, and they thought there'd still be a market. Oh. Correct. Yeah. Except it took them five years and they missed the market. And they had this chip yeah. and it wasn't working. Um, and they'd put all the money into it and we ended up buying them all. Ah. And Terry got it working. Ah. <laughs> and, and, and Terry puts his own fun, yeah. fun yeah. name on each, on each piece. So that was as a valve power prime layout. It's usually got a little quote somewhere. Yeah, there it is, a valve power prime layout. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's that one. Like a porky prime cut. really get scared about those because it's what sticks on here. <laughs> We're worried about copyright, you know. I think yeah. you put some song words in there once. <laughs> oh. oh, no. Uh, then, you get, then you get a fair royalty in each one you sell, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's a line of CD players. Yeah. That's, so that, that's, that's like a year's supply of CD players. Well, no, that's just for <laughs> yes. fun. Yeah. Do you know who, who this is going to? Um, I, I don't. The yeah, Andrew, do you know where these sands are going to? Germany. There you go. Okay, and, the, and these are Brio amplifiers, right? Yeah, this so is and it's relatively new. We've, we've remodeled the casework, trying to make it. Over, but we used to have screws in the top. Right. Whatever we could do, we couldn't stop the screws forming corrosion in the Far East. Right. Yeah. Right. If they were stainless steel, they were silver, and it's difficult to make stainless steel black. Yeah. So we had to use steel screws that we could black. But no problem in Europe. Get, get it out into the humidity and heat of the Far East, and it'll go rusty. And you don't, so and you don't find that out till it's out there for a while. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 
So we had to try and design a small three pace and we, we took the advantage of trying to make it look nicer and you know, yeah. a bit more up to date. And what, are the, what is this something to solve for? Is uh, 500 pounds. That's very reasonable. Yeah. Does that include a phono input? It does have, yeah. a, it does have a movie magnet phono input. Yeah. Yeah. That's the deal. Okay, and over here they're doing uh, just getting cases ready. Uh, this is a different thing. Yeah, it's a duck. And this is a phono cartridge. Phono stage. Oh, is this the Aria? It must be because it's got yeah. loading in the. Uh, That's right, yeah, this yeah. is the Aria. That's an MMMC, right. but it's not the same. Well, we we yeah. don't really believe in using the same concept for moving magnet, and so we, we've included two separate amplifiers yeah. and switched oh. between the two, so we've got two inputs. Yeah. So you're just not adding a gain stage when you flip the switch, you're adding, it's a whole no, it's separate. two separate oh. yeah. yeah, that's the problem. The market wanted both. <laughs> right. We kept saying, no, 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 I need to be separate, and right. then we compromise. It's interesting, because I'm just, doing, I'm just doing a, writing a piece right now on, should you buy a moving magnet phono preamplifier? In other words, if you have a move, you're using a moving magnet cartridge, but some yeah. people say, well, I plan on changing to a moving coil later but for now for the next three years I'm gonna buy one that does both but only use one you're waste you're putting your money into something you're not using you're better off putting something your money into an optimized system yeah. for what you have mm -hmm. and then later if you want to add a transformer or if you want to sell it and buy one that has a moving coil you're yeah. better off doing that that's why well, most of them just change the game level right but that doesn't really right. work it's much more the whole the whole circuit really needs to be optimized for right. the other Apollo. And the Apollo is a CD player. Yeah. There's lots of things. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And over here we're doing. Hi there. You're building uh, LX. What is it? Uh, LX. LX. Ah. Uh, and that's a. It's an amplifier. It's a, yeah, an amplifier. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's the Saturn CD board. So we have two case sizes. We have the small case where we do Apollo and Brio. Right. And then here we have the Saturn. Apollo's um, roughly 500 pounds. Saturn is roughly 1500. Well, I think there is a correlation between those two. Yeah, and we have an LX amplifier. I think it's 900 pounds. And then they list it as about this. These are feet. Feet? Yeah. Heat sinks. Illicit. Yeah. These are illicit. That's about. We put 200 watts into, two, into four rows, um, nearly 400 into two. Right. And what do you see as the, 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 the lifespan of these products in terms of how long do you keep them on the market? How old? Um, we would love it to be forever, but really? ten, ten, years ten years typically. Yeah. All right.